Pinkalicious, Pink or Treat by Victoria Kang. Please subscribe, like and watch until the end, where a nice surprise is waiting for you. Thank you. I was going to be Pinker Girl for Halloween, the most pinkerific superhero in Pinkville. My costume was so pinkastastic, I could hardly wait to go trick-or-treating. When I woke up in the morning, I went to turn on my light, but it wouldn't go on. Then I couldn't hear the radio. Mummy and Daddy always played in the kitchen while they made breakfast. Something spooky was definitely happening. What's going on? I asked when I went downstairs for breakfast. Peter couldn't wait to tell me. There was a big storm last night and everyone lost power, he said. I thought the howling was a scary ghost getting ready for Halloween. But Mummy said it was just the wind. Wow, I said, Pink Wheel has no electricity. This is going to make trick-or-treating even better. Hold on, said Daddy. He took out the batteries we kept in the emergency kit and popped them in a little radio. There, he said, switching it on. Let's find out what's happening. The mayor's voice came over the radio. The electric company is working hard to turn the power back on. But it could take hours, she said. If the lights don't come back on by evening, I ask that no one goes out trick-or-treating tonight. Wait, I gasped. Did the mayor just say what I think she said? I'm afraid so, said Mummy. Looks like Halloween will be cancelled. That's not fair, Peter and I cried. Halloween only comes once a year. But the storm is over, I said. The sun is out. We know you are disappointed, said Daddy. But if it's completely dark out tonight, it won't be safe to go door to door. No trick-or-treating, I sighed. No candy. This is the scariest Halloween ever. I went back up to my room. My pinker girl costume was still on my chair, all ready for me to put on and save the day. But this was a problem even a hero like Pinker Girl couldn't solve. If the power didn't come on, there was no way I could save Halloween. Unless... I put on my costume and raced back downstairs. Hold everything, I said. I have an idea. I told my family my plan. It will never work, Pinkalicious, said Peter. Maybe not, I said, but I have got to try. Mummy smiled. Okay, Pinker Girl, you can give it a try. I'll be your trusty sidekick for this mission. Outside, Pinkerville looked completely different from the day before. People's lawns were covered with leaves and branches that the storm had knocked down. Everyone was out clearing the streets and sidewalks. Mummy and I zoomed down to Town Hall. This is a job for Pinker Girl, I said. I knocked on the mayor's door. I'm sorry to bother you, but this is really important. I said, please don't cancel Halloween. All the children in Pinkville would be really disappointed. We have all waited 364 days for it to happen. I have an idea about how we could save it. Really? said the mayor. Then I want to hear it. 
as long as there is a way to keep things safe for everyone once the sun goes down, I promise I'll think about it. I told her what I was thinking. A big smile broke out on the mayor's face. You know, that just might work, she said. We followed the mayor to her radio broadcast room, which was powered by an emergency generator. This is Justine, said the mayor into the microphone. There is a new way to celebrate Halloween today. Here to tell you all about it is Pinkerville's own superhero, Pinker Girl. Tonight we are going to have a special Halloween party in Pinkville Park. Wear your costumes and bring your candy, your pinker lanterns and your flashlights, I said. Power or no power, we are going to make the town glow. My message went out over the airwaves. I hoped that everyone in town had heard it. When Mummy and I got home, Daddy and Peter were already busy carving the pink lanterns. It's party time, Peter said, grinning. Mummy and I gathered up all the candles and flashlights we could find. Then we made some decorations. I was having lots of fun getting ready for the party with my family. But I couldn't ignore the funny feeling in my tummy. I was nervous. Was anyone going to show up? Would I get any candy? It was still light outside when we got to the park to set up. The mayor and her family were already there with their pink lanterns and snacks. Pink or treat, pink or treat, give us something pink to eat, Peter and I said to the mayor. Bows, said the mayor, handing us giant pink lollipops. Thank you, we said. We finished decorating the park just as the sun started to set. No one's here yet, I said anxiously. Let's wait and see, said Daddy. Soon I saw something off in the distance. Faint streams of light started drifting down the street, leading to the park. It looked like ghosts were floating towards us from every direction. That's when I realized what was happening. People were carrying their lit up pink lanterns to the park. The park glowed with pumpkins, candles and flashlights. Everyone was laughing, having fun and trick-or-treating right there. My favorite librarian was reading a spooky ghost story. Someone brought music so that we could dance and someone else turned the monkey bars into a fun house. Pinker girl, you really saved the day, said the mayor. I beamed. Hey, Pinkalicious, said Peter. You really are a superhero. I think everyone in Pinkville came to the Halloween party. Look at all the candy we got. I know, I said. This is the most sweet delicious Halloween ever. Enjoy my new series Oliver and Chumpy, 19 video books with about 500 pictures. There is text, but I also read it aloud for the younger children. I have written 65 stories and had them illustrated at great cost for your children's fun. Oliver is an elegant tomcat and Chumpy is his lady friend. Oliver loves to ride in Chumpy's pouch when they go for adventures together. Please find a link to the first book in the description of this video. Please always subscribe and like 
if you find my effort interesting. Thank you so much.